The New York Islanders don't have a first-round pick, but could Lou Lamorello make a big trade at the NHL draft? We'll talk about that and a lot more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome, everybody, to the Friday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everybody who makes Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you can get new episodes as soon as they drop. And we are also now available on SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just do a search for Locked on Islanders. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Lots to get to on today's show, but first, if there's something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question, maybe a comment about something we've discussed, or a topic you'd like us to talk about on a future episode of the podcast. Just send us an email to LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name and where you're from, we're happy to mention you on the show when we discuss whatever it is that's on your mind. You can also follow the show on Twitter at LockedOnIsles. And you can follow me, Gil Martin, on Twitter at IceWars, N-Y-R-V-S-N-Y-I. We're going to keep you up to date on all things Islanders throughout this busy offseason from hirings, firings, trade rumors, the draft, free agency, you name it, we will have it covered for you this offseason on Locked On Islanders, where we give you daily updates on your favorite team. So the NHL draft is now less than a week away. It's coming up on Wednesday of next week, and we will continue to, to get you ready for the draft. And yeah, we know. The New York Islanders do not have a first-round pick in this year's draft. But, you know what? That doesn't mean there won't be news coming out of the draft. And all you have to do, really, is go back one year. Because the Islanders did have a first-round pick last season. And instead of using that pick, they traded it to the Montreal Canadiens and got Alexander Romanov back in return. And Romanov, after a slow start, uh, adjusting to life on Long Island and to the Islanders' rather exacting system, uh, ended up finishing the season quite strongly and played well down the stretch. And there are reasons to be optimistic that Romanov will be a solid contributor to the Islanders' blue line core for years to come. So no surprise that trade was made by Lou Lamorello at the draft. And keep in mind that it doesn't have to be the Islanders trading away their second round pick, which is the only pick they have uh, in the top three rounds as of right now, 49th overall. Doesn't have to involve them necessarily trading that pick to get a player or what have you. It could be moving. You you could have, for example, a sign and trade with any one of the potential Islanders free agents, whether it's Scott Mayfield or Pierre Engvall. Again, possibilities. You also obviously could have some news about Josh Bailey and where the Islanders may move him. And the whole thing about Bailey is it, it's it's getting more and more important for the Islanders to move on from Bailey in some way. But at the same time, it's looking more and more challenging for the Islanders to move on from Josh Bailey. Why? Well, let, let's put it straight. Uh some of the teams that we thought might be interested in Bailey. And if you recall correctly, 
Uh, we listed two earlier in the offseason, every day, as you will remember that. We mentioned teams that need leadership, veteran leadership, and need more contracts on their books in order to get up to the cap floor. So the two teams we mentioned were the Arizona Coyotes and the Chicago Blackhawks. A few other people have also mentioned the Anaheim Ducks, although I never felt the Ducks were a particularly good fit for Bailey just because their roster is a lot closer to being set and Bailey just wouldn't be a great fit. But a report coming out of uh, Phoenix basically saying that the Coyotes, up till now at least, have not shown interest in Josh Bailey. And now we're looking at a situation where it could be the Blackhawks being the number one candidate. But, you know, if you're Lou Lamorello or any NHL GM for that matter, and you want to move a player, the best thing you could have is more than one team competing because that sets up, you know, different bids and, and a bidding war only benefits the seller. So we'll see whether or not another team gets involved in the bidding. But right now, to me, Chicago remains the favorite. You know, they will be adding Bedard, the number one pick overall in this draft. They had three number one picks in last year's draft, adding a veteran leader like Josh Bailey, a guy who's been through almost everything there is that you can go through in this league, except maybe winning a Stanley Cup, but been on long playoff runs, been that rookie who was put into action maybe a little sooner than he should have been, been uh, a, a, an up and coming player who was in the top six been a bottom six forward as well, has power play and penalty kill experience, has been through numerous coaching changes, been on winning teams, losing teams. Josh Bailey definitely could benefit a team like the Chicago Blackhawks, and he can take some of those young players under his wing and help them mature. He's only got one year left on his contract. Again, could the Islanders retain some of that space? Maybe. And it's not just Bailey. You know, every day as we talked a couple of days back that the Islanders have five centers on their roster. If they're looking to trade one, the very fact that all 32 NHL GMs are in the same place at the same time and busy trying to pick up draft picks, move up in the draft, move back in the draft, help some of their you know, weaknesses on their roster, free up cap space. All of these things are all happening at the same time. When you've got that many people there, it is easy to just meet with them or pick up the phone. And you know, for two days, you've got all these GMs in the same place at the same time. A lot of trades very often do take place. And we shall see whether or not the Islanders end up making a deal, whether it gets them uh, a puck-moving defenseman or a goal scorer or frees up cap space by moving on from Josh Bailey. All of these things are possibilities, whether it's at day one of the draft or day two. And obviously, we will have it all covered for you right here on the Locked On Islanders podcast. So, uh a lot could happen on Wednesday and Thursday, even though the Islanders don't have a first and third round pick in this draft. We have got a lot more to discuss on today's episode. Two Islanders prospects have been named to the World Juniors Summer Showcase preliminary rosters. We'll talk a little bit about that, plus a lot more still to come on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs make you look good. They have stretch khaki shorts that are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg to give you that truly sculpted look. And look, they 
fit better than regular shorts. Regular shorts are stiff and made of restricting cotton, but bird dogs have invented a cloud knit fabric that looks just like khakis, but stretches so you get that slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. And bird dogs uses anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on NHL for a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on NHL for that free Yeti style tumbler. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. So, you know, as time goes on, we have seen more and more uh, junior tournaments being set up. And now there is the World Juniors Summer Showcase. And that is always a, a big deal because it allows some of these younger hockey players, players who are, you know, in juniors and 19 or under to face off against some of the top players from around the world and show what they can do against the best players in the world at their age group. So this year, it's going to take place in a little more than a month, July 27th through August 4th. It's in Plymouth, Michigan, which is where USA Hockey is based. And there'll be four teams Two American teams, one team from Finland, and one team from Sweden. There'll be eight total games, and it will give each of these three countries a chance to take an early look at some of their top prospects. And the good news is that two Islanders players have been named to the preliminary rosters. Quinn Finley to Team USA, and Callie Odelius going to be named to Team Sweden. So some good news there for those two players. And Finley, in case you aren't sure, third round pick by the Islanders in last year's draft. And this past year, 25 goals, 40 assists, splitting time between the Madison Capitals and the Chicago Steel. He is committed to play at the University of Wisconsin this coming fall. But again, to get him to play some of these, you know, against some of the top players in the world is definitely good. You know, some of the top players in his age group. So uh, it, it's going to be a, a challenge for him to make the roster but we certainly like to hear that. And then for Odelius, you know, he was the uh, final pick in the second round last year. And this will be the second World Junior tournament that he is taking part in. Had a goal in last year's tournament. Although, unfortunately, Odelius, as the tournament progressed and we got into some of the medal rounds, less and less ice time for him. Now, he has been playing in Swedish, uh, one of the Swedish leagues. Uh, the second tier league wants to get a promotion and move up to the next league. He had a sort of average season last year, only 11 points, but we still, you know, are hoping that he continues to grow and develop and certainly participating in a tournament like this gives them a chance to do that. So while the Islanders do not have uh, an elite group of uh, prospects in their prospect pool and nobody right now who is probably NHL ready to step in and be an everyday player, uh, at the very least, there are some prospects regarded highly enough to get invitations to this summer showcase for the world junior championships one other quick note here uh the athletic recently listed each team's salary cap situation and ranked them from one to 32 and every day as you know we have talked extensively 
about how the Islanders need to add some more, you know, they, they have a problem with the cap right now. And no surprise on this list that the Islanders ranked 26th out of 32 teams. And based on what they've already committed to salaries, which is a little under 79 million, the estimate of what they'll have to pay their RFAs, which is a little over 2.1 million, the projected available cap space for the Islanders, a little under two and a half million dollars and you still haven't signed Mayfield, Engvall, uh, Varlamov and uh, Mayfield and Parise. So those four guys unsigned and you only have two and a half or a little less than two and a half million dollars to do it. And again, just to bring us full circle, that is yet another reason why you want to go out there and free up some cap space. And oh yeah, by the way, uh, you know, they, every team, if they have them, uh, you know, they talk about uh, problem contracts and the athletic listed J.G. Pajot, who has a $5 million cap hit on the third line as a problem contract with the Islanders. And yesterday, you know, we talked about the possibility of moving on from Pajot in order to, you know, trade him, free up some cap space and maybe help bring in that puck moving defenseman or that uh, goal scoring winger that this team certainly would like to add. So just uh, again, if you're curious, the teams below the Islanders on the salary cap list, the Tampa Bay Lightning, the Calgary Flames, the LA Kings, and then there are three teams that are right now projected to be over the cap, the Minnesota Wild, the Boston Bruins, and the Edmonton Oilers. And again, if you're wondering which teams have the most available projected cap space, uh, the Chicago Blackhawks, the Detroit Red Wings, the Arizona Coyotes, the Anaheim Ducks, and believe it or not, the Carolina Hurricanes and the Pittsburgh Penguins are fifth and sixth on that list. That has to sting for Islander fans, knowing that division rivals uh, who are, you know, right there with you uh, or, or who were ahead of you in the standings uh, have a lot more cap space to improve their roster, and the Islanders just don't have it. Look, here's the bottom line. Lou Lamorello got the Islanders into this cap mess. No doubt about that. So now the question is, what can he and will he do to help get the Islanders out of this cap mess? Because that is going to be the next thing that they need to do. Because, you know, if you're standing still, if you just bring back the same group of players and other teams are bringing in new players and getting better, you're, you're stepping backwards just, you know, by comparison. And that's not where this New York Islander team wants to be. If you're a, a fringe playoff team right now, barely making the playoffs, and the teams below you are improving and you're not, that's not a good recipe for long-term success. So let's see what happens at the draft, during the offseason, uh, the Bailey buyout, all these possible things on the table for the Islanders, and we'll see where we end up. But we have got more to get to on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. We will have a scouting report on Maxime Starbeck, one of the players the Islanders may draft in the second round of this year's draft. We've got that, plus our Islanders birthday of the day, all that and more still to come on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you could stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. Forget planning months in advance. Game Time has deals on tickets 
right up to the day of the event. And you can get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. And the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. And you can get images of your seat before you buy, so you'll know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account. Redeem code locked on NHL for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. And after today's show, be sure to check out Locked On's 2023 NHL mock draft special. The local hosts of the Locked On NHL channel have made their picks, and host Gil Martin and Hadi Kalakesh, oh, that's me, McGill. Uh, Break down every selection over a three-day mock draft event. Find the episodes on Locked On NHL on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. So we're going to take a look at another player the Islanders may be interested in drafting. And uh, always good to sort of check these out. And this is a player that the Islanders reportedly spoke to at the scouting combine, Maxime Sturbeck. He is a right-handed Slovakian defenseman, and he is going to play at Michigan State this year. Played in the United States Hockey League with the Sioux Falls Stampede last year and had five goals and 18 points in 46 games. He has a good shot, good passer, uh, and is aggressive with his physicality, but Needs to shoot the puck a little bit more frequently. Boy, would he be a perfect Islander, right? And needs to be a little bit more patient with the puck in his own zone. Those are two things that really make him fit in with the Islanders maybe a little bit too much. His competitiveness may very well be his biggest asset. A lot of people compare him to uh, Ben Sherratt. He is a defensive defenseman first and foremost, but he's right-handed and pretty big, maybe 6'1 and a half, 205. He's got good reach, good physicality, and he loves to compete. Gives you that effort, that coachable attitude, and coaches tend to look at him, and <clears throat> when the game is on the line, at least at this level, he has been one of the players that they, you know, count on to be on the ice, especially if you're protecting a lead. He probably projects to either a second or third pair defenseman, depending on how much his offense develops. And I have seen him ranked anywhere between 34th and 60th in different uh, draft lists. So maybe Sturback would be uh, an interesting pick for the New York Islanders, and, you know, even if they re-sign Scott Mayfield to a, a short-term deal, here's a guy who in two or three or four years may be ready to take on that very important and kind of difficult-to-find role of the large, physical, stay-at-home, right-handed defenseman because, you know, right-handed defensemen right now in this league are at a premium, and that's why, essentially... Uh, it's pretty safe to say that some team is going to overpay for Scott Mayfield and kind of why I feel unless he gives the Islanders a significant hometown discount, he will not be back with the team next year. All right, uh, time now for our Islanders birthday of the day. You talk about big physical defensemen. How about today's Islanders birthday of the day? Uh, it, we are again a day early, but Saturday will be the 58th birthday of former Islanders defenseman Uwe Krupp, six foot six, 235 pounds, one of the bigger players to play on the Islanders, a native of Cologne, Germany. Uh, not a lot of German-born players in the NHL, but Krupp certainly fit the bill and had a very good NHL career. Not bad, especially when you consider he was an 11th round pick 
of the Buffalo Sabres back in 1983, came over to North America in 86-87 and split time between the Rochester Americans of the AHL and the Sabres, came to the Islanders in 91-92, early in the season in that Pat LaFontaine-Pierre Turgeon deal that we spoke about just yesterday, and had three solid seasons with the New York Islanders. His best year statistically, 1992-93, the year the Islanders went on that long playoff run. Nine goals, 38 points, 67 penalty minutes that year, and a plus six, played in 18 playoff games, and had a goal and six points in those. After leaving the Islanders, he played for the Quebec Nordique, won a Stanley Cup with the Colorado Avalanche, and then later played for the Red Wings and the Atlanta Thrashers, who he only played four games for in 2002-2003. For his NHL career, 729 career games, 69 goals, 281 points, 660 penalty minutes. You know, Krupp only topped 100 penalty minutes in a season once, in the NHL, and that was in his first full season. He was big. He wasn't afraid to be physical, but he certainly was not a dirty player. It is easy to pinpoint his best game as an Islander. March 20th, 1993, at the Pacific Coliseum in Vancouver. So if there are any Canuck fans still watching uh, and listening to this podcast, uh, a memory for you, uh, Islanders and Canucks. Mark Fitzpatrick, the goalie for the Islanders. Kay Whitmore in between the pipes for the Canucks. And this was a career offensive game for Uwe Krupp. One goal, four assists. He had three shots on goal, and his goal was the game winner as the Islanders trounced the Canucks 7-2. to two. Islanders basically giving up 30 shots, outshot 30-28. to 28 but still able to have a big, big game in this one. And two goals for Steve Thomas, but for Krupp, a five-point night and a a very special memory for Uwe Krupp. All right, I want to thank everyone again for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Every day is Monday on the show. We'll have the latest news concerning your New York Islanders, and, of course, we will talk about another possible draft target for the Islanders with that 49th overall pick. Until then, have a great weekend, everybody. Stay safe, and of course, let's go Islanders.